Hello everyone, thank you for joining me today. We're going to take a little journey through the world of art, looking at it through a very special lens. That of course being what John Berger famously called the male gaze in his book, Ways of Seeing. It's like he flipped the script on how we see art and each other, especially women. And with this in mind, we'll dive into Lorna Simpson's incredible piece, Guarded Conditions, and see how it connects with other feminist art by the Gorilla Girls and Judy Chicago's famous The Dinner Party. Starting off with John Berger's ways of seeing, he lays the groundwork for understanding the male gaze. Berger suggests men dream of women, and women dream to be dreamt of by men. This statement encapsulates the essence of the male gaze, highlighting a societal and cultural dynamic where women are often objects of visual pleasure and scrutiny. Berger challenges us to see beyond traditional representations and to question who is doing the looking and who is being looked at. This leads us to Lorna Simpson's Guarded Conditions, created in 1989. This compelling work consists of text and image, a hallmark of Simpson's approach to art. This piece features multiple panels of text and images of a black woman's hair and back, with phrases that expose the racialized and gendered violence embedded within society. Simpson's work speaks volumes about the intersectionality of race and gender, presenting a critique that extends Berger's concept of the male gaze to include the racialized gaze. So much of uh, photography is built on revealing something or something to be revealed. Um, and my question is, what is that that is being revealed in terms of its um, quote unquote accuracy or, um, or in terms of information about the subject? Um, so I think it, it's, that is the arena and kind of what I want the viewer to think about. Through Simpson's work, she challenges us to confront the ways in which black women's bodies are subjected to both surveillance and objectification, guarded under conditions of societal and cultural expectations. The repetition of phrases such as skin attacks and sex attacks alongside the anonymous images of women's body parts evokes a sense of vulnerability in the relentless scrutiny faced by black women. Simpson's work thus broadens the conversation around the male gaze by incorporating the complexities of racial identity and its impact on the perception and representation of women. Moving on to the Guerrilla Girls, which is an anonymous group of feminist activist artists, furthers this critique of representation in the art world and beyond. They're known for their bold, provocative posters that call out sexism and racism in the art world. The Guerrilla Girls confront the institutional biases that marginalize women and non-white artists. Their work directly addresses the male gaze by challenging the underrepresentation and misrepresentation of women in art, echoing Berger's observations about who is seen and how. Judy Chicago's The Dinner Party serves as a monumental celebration of women's achievements throughout history effectively countering the male gaze by centering female experiences and contributions. This installation with its triangular table hosting 39 place settings for historical and mythical female figures reclaims the narrative, offering a space where women are honored not for their appearance but for their impact on history. Chicago's work, much like Simpson's, challenges the traditional narratives and invites viewers to see women through a lens of respect and admiration rather than objectification. What ties Simpson's guarded conditions to Berger, the Guerrilla Girls, and Chicago is not just a shared resistance to the male gaze, but a profound interrogation of the systems of power that perpetuate it. Simpson extends the conversation by incorporating the dimension of race, reminding us that the gaze is not only gendered, but also racialized. This intersectionality is crucial for understanding the scope of how visibility, representation, and power dynamics play out in art and society. Lorna Simpson's Guarded Conditions, in conversation with John Berger's Ways of Seeing, The Guerrilla Girls' Activism, and Judy Chicago's The Dinner Party, provides a rich way of understanding and challenging the male gaze. Together, these works compel us to reconsider not only how women are represented, but also who has the power to look and to define what is seen. 
They invite us to dream of a world where all individuals can be seen in their full humanity, beyond the constraints of gendered and racialized visions. As we reflect on these powerful artistic interventions, let us consider our own gaze in the ways in which we can contribute to a more equitable and inclusive representation in art and beyond.